U.S. scientists are getting a new toy. The U.S. National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine has endorsed the development of a multi-million dollar particle accelerator project. The Electron-Ion Collider will consist of intersecting accelerators, one blasting a beam of electrons and the other a beam of protons or ions to nearly the speed of light. The beams are made to collide at intersecting points, which are surrounded by detectors to record the resulting interaction. Each collision generates virtual photons, particles of light that penetrate through the proton or nucleus to tease out the structure within, including the distribution of quarks and gluons. The proposed machine would be able to help physicists understand where the mass of a proton comes from, how it gets its spin, and how gluons work. Two facilities have submitted proposals to host the EIC. Brookhaven National Laboratory has a proton accelerator, but no electron ring, while Jefferson Lab has the electron accelerator, but will need a proton ring. The Department of Energy is currently building a 730 million US dollar facility for rare isotope beams and may not be able to fund the proposed collider until after 2020. So for now, the two labs are collaborating on R&D. Ooh, science. Scientists create Frankenmouse. Talk about some weird science. New research published in the journal Nature Biotechnology details how scientists from the Salk Institute transferred human brain cells into mice pups. Newsweek reports that researchers took brain cells from human fetuses, turned them fluorescent green, and put them inside the brains of mice. They're not making an army of mice men, rather they hope the part human rodents will teach them more about our own mind. Researchers also placed small plastic windows over animals' skulls to track how the human cells developed in their new environment. This was observed over a period of several months, and human brain cells were found to outnumber the mice brain cells in some areas. So did the parahuman mice get smarter? Nope, they were no more intelligent than other mice. But as Newsweek reports, the research could lead to some pretty great applications, such as being used to help patients with brain damage. Scientists crack the Yeti riddle. Wicked science coming out of Buffalo, New York says the abominable snowman isn't much of a man at all. Scientists used their mad skills to analyze nine so-called Yeti samples from several museum and private collections. Turns out those Yeti samples were just bears and a dog. That's one Asian black bear, one Himalayan brown bear, six Tibetan brown bears, and some pooch's tooth. Previous research looking at suspected Yeti hair samples found they came from ancient polar bears, dogs, and other bears. Will this news stop cryptozoologists from seeking out mythical mountain creatures? Probably not. Designer babies may soon be possible. A team of researchers at Oregon Health and Science University have successfully performed the first known attempt to create genetically modified human embryos. Gene editing using CRISPR technology is capable of finding a target DNA sequence and replacing it with a desired sequence. Once injected, the guide RNA in the CRISPR-Cas9 system seeks out the target DNA before the Cas9 enzyme binds and cuts it. The void in the DNA strand is then filled with the desired sequence. CRISPR technology theoretically makes it possible to modify the genomes of any living thing on Earth. Researchers in China have previously conducted trials using CRISPR technology in cancer patients, but the results revealed a major problem. The technique can cause unwanted mutations in other parts of a DNA sequence. However, the Portland team is confident that it is possible to avoid such errors. Researchers create robotic device to aid the heart. This device can help weak tickers keep on beating. The plastic device is placed around a damaged ventricle and is powered via air pressure. It then squeezes the heart to help it circulate blood throughout the body. The mechanics of the device are said to be adaptive to the organ's normal beating rhythm. It so far has only been tested on animal hearts. But it has the potential to one day help the millions of people suffering from heart issues. Meet the eye motif. 
Aussie scientists just found something new, cool, and rather obscure about our genetic blueprint. Research published in the journal Nature Chemistry details a new type of DNA structure named the eye motif. Here's the knot-like structure again. What's interesting about it is how it's built. Normal DNA is made up of bases coded as letters. These are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. These all bind to another letter except in the I motif where they don't. Normally, cytosine binds to guanine and vice versa, but in the new structure, cytosine was found to pair with cytosine. And that has researchers puzzled as to what that means, but they do have some ideas. According to The Independent, scientists reckon the new structure may be partly responsible for reading DNA and turning them into useful substances. Gizmodo reports they may act as a sort of switch for controlling gene expression, but could mean nothing at all. The Independent reports that the structure has been cited previously, but this is the first time researchers have found it inside living cells. One thing's for sure, our bodies are a whole lot more complicated than we realize. Modified spinach plants detect explosives. MIT researchers have modified spinach plants to turn them into bomb detectors. Explosives such as landmines contain chemical compounds called nitroaromatics. If nitroaromatics are present in groundwater, they are absorbed by the roots of the spinach plant and transported to the leaves in a process called transpiration. Researchers embedded the leaves with molecules that bind to nitroaromatics and carbon nanotubes, which emit a constant fluorescent signal that serves as a reference. An infrared camera reads these signals. When nitroaromatics are present, the fluorescent signal from the molecules decreases. Once the decrease is detected, the device sends a wireless signal to the user. The experiments were conducted within a distance of 3.3 feet, but researchers are confident that the radius can be increased and that one sensor could monitor multiple plants.